Hey guys, welcome to PSG. This is Shank, and today we're going to be recapping the story for Curse of Osiris. With the threat of the Red War subsided, and the Traveler's Awakening causing a wave of light to spread throughout the entire galaxy, previous inert planets started teeming with activity. The first place this became apparent was on Mercury. During the Golden Age, Mercury had been a garden world for the entire solar system. However, the Vex had terraformed the planet into another machine world. The Vanguard had largely left Mercury unpatrolled, as they considered the Hive and Fallen to be a much more pressing threat to the last city's safety. Ikora Ray summons us to the tower, where she explains her hidden agents have identified the ghost of an exiled guardian. The ghost, named Sagira, was the ghost of the warlock Osiris, who had been exiled from the city due to his heretical teachings about the Vex. Osiris had claimed that the city needed to turn away from the fallen threat and focus on the Vex, as their existence in the system was an existential threat to the city. Ikora asks that you investigate Mercury, where you discover the Infinite Forest, a Vex prediction engine capable of simulating all possible futures. This machine allows the Vex to predict the correct actions to accomplish their goals creating a reality where the Vex integrate themselves into the laws of the universe. As our Guardian lands on Mercury, he finds himself encountering a large Vex force that's been deployed to protect the Infinite Forest. Our Guardian finds themselves unable to enter the gate to the Infinite Forest, so they are forced to seek out the Cult of Osiris, a sect of fanatics who worship Osiris despite Osiris viewing them as nothing more than a nuisance. We find a member of the Cult, Brother Vance, stationed at a lighthouse nearby the entrance to the Infinite Forest. Upon meeting Brother Vance, the Guardian learned that the cult had a device capable of reviving the ghost in the European Dead Zone. After landing on Earth, we find the base of the Cult of Osiris had been overrun by a gang of fallen. Fortunately, however, the device we needed to revive the ghost remained intact. The Guardian placed the shell of Segura into the machine and as a result, Sagira was revived and temporarily took control of our ghost. Once revived, Sagira explains that Osiris discovered the Vex were simulating light, a feat they had been unable to successfully accomplish up to that point. This could be potentially disastrous for the system, as previously, Guardians were able to overcome Vex prediction algorithms using their paracausal abilities, as the Vex were unable to account for these powers. Sigira informs us that this is the result of the Vex Mind Panoptes, which was created to solve the issue of simulating paracausal power. With Sigira's and Ikora's help, the Guardian successfully enters the Infinite Forest and views several virtual copies or echoes of Osiris that were used to explore the vastness of the Infinite Forest. One of these echoes leads us to a dark future in which the Vex have accomplished their goal. In this future, the Guardian was attacked by Panoptes, and saved only through the timely intervention of many of the Echoes of Osiris. It became apparent that the only way to solve this crisis was to destroy Panoptes in order to break the Vex's control over the forest. In order to find Panoptes, the Guardian worked with Sagira and Ikora to not only find a map of the forest, but also to go back in time to when Panoptes was first created in order to track him down. However, Sigir was captured while exploring the past. With Panoptes located, Ikora Ray enabled the Guardian to enter the forest and engage Panoptes in one last climactic battle. With the help of Osiris and his Echoes, the Guardian emerged victorious, and in the aftermath of the battle, mentor and student, Osiris and Ikora, were reunited for the first time in years. After a brief discussion between the two, Osiris, seemingly at peace with his former protege in the Vanguard, decided to return to the Infinite Forest to protect against any new threats that might emerge. This would not, however, be the Guardian's last time in the Infinite Forest. While exploring the forest and using the Forge on Mercury to make weapons based on prophecies from Osiris, the Guardian discovered an unknown prophecy, one perfectly paradoxical in nature. This led to an old Vanguard signal which led the Guardian to discover traces of light from another legendary Guardian, one who had been missing for years, Saint-14. Upon returning to Brother Vance, the Guardian was able to track Saint's last known location using light emanating from the altar. 
This led the Guardian back into the Infinite Forest and into the future once more, where they discovered thousands of destroyed Vex with Saint-14 deceased and laid to rest ceremoniously by the Vex. This devastated Osiris, who blamed himself for the death of his dearest friend. However, even in death, the legendary Titan offered the Guardian a gift, as well as a hope for the future. On Saint's body, the Guardian found a shotgun with a message inscribed into it. This message revealed that the Guardian not only gifted the shotgun to Saint, but also inspired him to become the legend he is known for today, despite the fact that our Guardian had never met him. This created the perfect paradox. This shotgun would forever be trapped in a loop, where we receive it from Saint-14, only to bequeath it back to him at some point in his past. This won't be the last time we'll see Saint-14, but for that story, you'll need to come back and watch our Season of Dawn recap video. One additional threat still loomed in the system after we had defeated Panoptes and found Saint-14. We received another summon from Emperor Callus. Callus invited us to once again board the Leviathan and deal with yet another Vex crisis. During its consumption of Nessus, a large piece of debris had blocked the Leviathan's main engine. Inside this debris, we found another Vex mind, Argos, the planetary core. After navigating the underbelly of the Leviathan, we were able to defeat Argos and clear the Leviathan's engines before it caused massive destruction to the system. Before we're sucked into the depths of the Leviathan's engines, Callus is able to save us and teleport us to his treasure room, and for the first time, offers us the chance to become one of his shadows. While we won't take him up on this offer quite yet, we have now established ourselves as a very useful tool for the Cabal Emperor. And with that, that'll wrap up our Curse of Osiris recap. I know this wasn't everybody's favorite expansion. In all honesty, it wasn't mine either. However, it did bring back Osiris, it brought back Saint-14, and it furthered our relationship with Emperor Callus. So while definitely not one of the best seasons, I believe this season was necessary to set us up for where we are now. What was your guys' opinion of Curse of Osiris? Let us know down in the comments below. This was Shank. Stay tuned to PSG for all your latest gaming news, reviews, and discussions.